So this chapter two, we call it potentiometry. And we just talked like five minutes ago that potentiometry is the static technique, inter is the static interfacial technique. It means that we don't generate any significant current in this technique and it is interfacial. So we are measuring the phenomena occurring at the inter electrode interface. So this is the potentiometry. And what is like the what is the uh, basic concept of the potentiometry? From the Nernst equation, we can see that the concentration of the redox species, the O oxidized form, the R, may be reduced from like, for example, uh, let's do the last one. If you have iron three and iron two, the, the, these concentrations gonna affect your electrode potential, right? So, vice versa, if we can, if we can measure the electrode potential, if we measure this, then we can quantify this, right? In the first chapter, you are given the concentration of the O and R, and then you are asked to calculate E. But now, in potentiometry, you are measuring E, and you are going to calculate back the O and R. So this is the vice versa problem. So this may be on the Nernst equation still, on the Nernst equation, that the concentrations of the redox species O and R affect the electrode potential. That's why we can do the potentiometry. And let's uh, consider this figure for a second. So what are we doing here is we have two electrodes because uh, to measure the potential, we cannot measure the potential of one electrode. We need two electrodes. The two electrodes are the reference electrode and the indicator electrode. The reference electrode will have the potential of E ref. The indicator electrode will have the potential of E in. And the reference electrode is the electrode which has the constant potential at all the same experimental condition. In contrast, the indicator electrode potential or E in will change according to the composition of the sample solution. So, for example, if your if your sample solution has more iron three, then you will measure uh, more uh, more positive electrode uh, more positive cell potentials, for example, or more positive electrode potential, for example. So, the component of the sample solution will affect only the indicator electrode, but not the reference electrode, because the reference electrode need to have the same constant, uh, same potential. And how to measure the potential difference, we need the high resistance volmeter. So this is volmeter. The volmeter measure the potential difference between the indicator electrode and the reference electrode. So again, the properties of the reference electrode is it needs to be stable. But now the indicator electrode, it has to be selective because there may be more than one ion or one chemical species in this solution. So for example, if you want to measure, let's say chloride, then your indicator electrode are going to have to be uh, sensitive to only chloride. Or if you want to measure the ion three, ion two, then your indicator electrode has to be select selective to only iron 3 and iron 2. So your indicator electrode needs to be uh, selective. And most of this chapter, we're going to talk about how, uh, what, is, uh, what are the examples of indicator electrodes. So what is the number here? Because we are measuring the potential difference between the indicator electrode and the reference electrode. And we usually put the indicator electrode on the, light, on the right and the reference on the left. So the E cell or this number is in theory is gonna be E indicator minus E reference. E indicator minus E reference. And you can see that we can write the cell shorthand notation here that again, we put the reference electrode on the left. So we start with it. And then you gonna have the salt bridge which we're gonna talk about it later. We need the salt bridge. And then your sample solution here, and then your indicator electrodes will be your right electrode. 
So that's that's the basic concept of the potential metric.